Hello, my name is Verity Flaggan and I'm a proper good English teacher like. I've also just filmed Brewtube. Today at Board Deck and Dice we are looking at the two player game of Raptor by the two Brunos, Frank and um, Mars. And Raptor is a two player asymmetrical game which means that both sides play a little differently. In Raptor you have one side which is the Raptor Mama and her little baby Raptors and the other side which is the scientists. The Raptor Mama is simply trying to get her three of her babies out of the exits that which are the half circles but one of the scientists is having a sleep get back up <laughs> or eat all the scientists that are currently on the board which starts at four but could be more. The scientists are trying to capture three babies or shoot the mama raptor with these little bullets which will then come over here five times and have five active sleep tokens on the mama raptor. The way they will do this is each side will take a deck of nine numbered cards and they will shuffle them up and they will take three and they will choose one and play them. If the person plays the lowest number card, so if the raptor plays number one and the scientist plays number nine, the raptor will get to play their special power. However, the other team will get to play the amount of uh, action points which is equal to the higher number take away the lower number. I could have said that better but I'm an English teacher not a maths teacher. So in this case it would be eight. If the scientist has played eight it would be seven. You're right, well done at home. Go to the cupboard and get yourself a sweetie. If you haven't got any sweeties just eat some sugar. So that is generally how it works. Actions available to you are different depending on if you're the raptor or the scientist and they're very clearly spelt out in these excellent player aids. Uh, so the raptors may move a baby raptor one space, baby raptors can only move one space as one action point, and not diagonally, only orthogonally, which was a word I didn't know until I started playing board games. Ooh, dictionary corner. Mental note. The mother raptor may move any number of spaces unless there is an obstruction. So it could move all the way over to that scientist, for example, or one, two, like so. The mother raptor, if she is next to a scientist, may kill a scientist. Yo, yeah, I'll get in my belly, get in my belly. Sorry. Uh, thus achieving, getting herself a bit closer to her end game goal. The mother raptor may wake up a sleeping baby if she is next to it. So if this baby has been knocked out by a scientist, it can cost one action point to wake up the baby, but she must be next to it. Or the mother raptor may move, remove fire tokens from the board. Fire tokens are tokens that the raptors cannot move through. If the fire tokens are connected orthogonally again, the mother raptor using her tail, which is very advanced firefighting equipment, whoosh, knocks that out and it will have a chain effect of removing all the pieces. The scientist's movement is the same as the babe raptors. They can move one space, one space. If they have line of sight with the mama raptor, they can shoot the mama raptor, giving her one of these tokens. Now these tokens have to be removed by an action point on the raptor player. The mother raptor cannot move until she has removed all tokens on this board and given them back to the scientist. So that's quite an important strategy. The scientist can stand back up should he have been, should he or she have been frightened by the roar of the mother raptor. The scientist can shoot a baby raptor but only if they're next to it. So they can knock it over, put it to sleep. They can capture a baby sleeping raptor but note that they can only take one aggressive move action per turn. So to capture this baby raptor on one turn it would require two scientists, one nearby. One's aggressive action will be to knock the baby out, the others will be to capture it. Shooting the mother raptor is also considered a aggressive manoeuvre. 
let's see if that's everything. Yes, I think that's everything. So let's go through the special powers on the cards. Nine has no power because it is the highest number, so obviously doesn't um, doesn't need any other bonus because whenever you play the nine, unless the other person plays the same the same number, in which case both cards get cleared, then uh, you're going to get action points. Eight, which is fairly powerful, so you can knock out, you can scare two scientists. Um, I think they have to be on. Nope, there's no limit there to where they are. You just do your raw and you can lay down two scientists. Again, difficult action to get unless you know the person is going to play a nine. Seven allows you to remove uh, any number of uh, three sleeping tokens from your um, board or wake up up to three babies or any combination of the two. Six is an interesting one. This lets you remove the raptor from the board and then place it back anywhere after the scientists had their go. Five is another sleeping token one, but this time you only get two. Four, now this is a very important skill, very important strategy one, I think, this one. Four allows you to call two babies to your tile as long as they can make it, and you, that can include the end tile. And although you can't call them to the exit, if you were stood here and played this card and got to use the special ability, you can call this one all the way to there, so they're one move away from it. Now, in this case, you wouldn't be able to call any of the other ones because they have to be able to make it, and this one can't go through the scientists, so it's got no way, it can't go down it's got no way of getting around. Oh, I lie! It can go this way. But if, for example, the mother was on that square, it wouldn't be able to get to them. So it has to be able to have a clear route to it. And then three is just one scientist you can make scared. Two is the disappearing one again. And one lets you call one baby to your tile, but also lets you reshuffle. Because every time you play a card, it will remain on the table for the other player to see exactly which cards you have played. This means that they have an idea of what you've got left. And certainly when you've gone through once, if you've gone all the way without using number one, you've only got two cards in your hand, they can remember which two cards you've got in your hand and what you are likely to play. So let's look at the scientist powers. Again, number nine is just the high number. Number eight gives you four jeep moves, which is effectively moving a scientist the same way a raptor does. You can go any number of squares. Number seven lets you put three of the fires out, which we've just said can block the raptors in. Now these raptors can't go that way. Scientists can go through fire as long as they don't finish on fire. Number six lets you bring in two more scientists from reserve. Uh, five lets you put two fires out. Four lets you put to sleep two babies. And they have to be on a neighbouring tile or the same tile. Three is jeeps again, but less. Two is two more reinforcements. And one lets you put one baby to sleep and reshuffle. The boards are also double sided. So you can play on this side or this side. Anywhere where there's not a circle, you place one of these rocks and that acts as kind of um, cover for the raptors or the scientists. Um, some of the desert side boards don't have any rocks on them, which is an interesting little way. Everything flips round, setup's fairly easy and straightforward. Is there anything else I need to tell you? No, I think that's it. So that is Raptor, a two-player game that if you've watched my top five games that left a mark video, you will already know ranks fairly highly for me. Um, I just love this game. It's, it's easy to teach. People get it. Once you've shown them the cards, they get it. Um, these player aids are brilliant. They're double-sided, but they've got another language on the back. But they just explain not only everything you can do, but briefly what the scientists might do as well. So you've got a real chance of kind of trying to work out what they're, what they're up to. Most times I play this, the scientists do win, I have to say. I had one gutting go where I just went super aggressive with the Mummer Raptor and ate everything I could see. And then it was fire that let me down in the end and I uh, did have a poor draw. So because you're only drawing three cards at a time, there is some amount of luck that comes into it, but you've only got nine cards, so I kind of feel it's not enough luck for me not to like the game, and I'm probably one who doesn't mind 
lucky games anyway. I beat my brother at Star Wars Risk as the Rebels the other day when really I, I shouldn't have beaten him. But I did, mainly due to a lucky dice roll, and it was funny. <laughs> James, eat that. So I really like Raptor. The rules, nice, they come in uh, nicely presented. Uh, they give demonstrations of everything. It is one that it helps to get the board out and just work through when you've got the rules there, but then I say that about most games. The um, intimidation factor, yeah, there's a few bits out to it. The board's double-sided, there's a few tokens and stuff that you put out, you've got all these models, but still, I think when you see there's only nine cards and the icon iconography, is really good. I think it's um, it's okay. Okay, good rule book. Low to medium intimidation factor. I really rate this game. I, I love it. It's one of my favourite two-player games. Not my favourite two-player game, um, which I shall probably review in the coming days. A uh, little surprise for you there, something to look forward to. So, that is Raptor. This is Board Deck and Dice. Thanks for watching.